Alright guys, in today's video I wanted to take a little bit of time here to talk about the PlayStation 5, but more specifically I wanted to just talk about why I believe Sony shouldn't really be too focused on waiting for Xbox to make the first move or to make any move at all. In fact, I think Sony should just be confident in the PlayStation 5 and in PlayStation in general and just come out here and talk about it when they're ready. Now, we don't know for sure that Sony is really sitting back and waiting for the uh, competition, that being Microsoft, to actually do something first. But that is basically what we are going off of right now, not only based off of what Sony has said, but obviously that more recent Bloomberg report. And we're not going to focus too much on that. But before going any further, if you could do me a favor and leave the video a like if you think you're going to enjoy it, or if you do appreciate the content on the channel here, it really helps it out, goes a long way, lets me know you guys do enjoy the content, and make sure you hit the subscribe button as well if you haven't already done that. But talking about Sony and the PlayStation 5, I've seen a lot of conversation going on recently where there are individuals who are almost framing it as if Sony is like scared of Microsoft or they're afraid of Xbox and because of this this is why they're playing everything so close to the chest this is why they're being so quiet and this is why they're ultimately waiting for Microsoft to make the first move now just because I don't think Sony should be waiting around for Microsoft to go first or to reveal anything first regarding like the price of the next generation Xbox or anything like that. It doesn't mean I believe that Sony is scared. Actually, I do think that Sony is being very smart in a few different ways. First of all, they're being strategic. Um, they're trying to make sure that they don't do anything too hastily, which I do think is a good thing, and that is one major benefit to them choosing to wait. Although you could argue that some fans are starting to get a little bit anxious and uh, impatient at this point, but either way, it is a strategic thing for Sony to be doing. You could also say that this is a smart thing for them to do simply because it shows that they're not being arrogant or they're not getting you know too ahead of themselves. This is something that Sony was guilty of during the PlayStation 3 reveal. This is something that really hurt them during that time where they were just so overly confident that they didn't care about the competition at all. They didn't see the competition as a threat even remotely and they didn't respect their competition um, or what I should say is that they definitely underestimated their competition to a great degree and it ended up hurting them really badly initially with the PlayStation 3. I will say that Sony choosing to wait and be patient here is a good sign that they are not willing to risk being overly confident. They're not willing to potentially make that same mistake where just because they are in a very good position now or they're ending this generation in a very good position being the market leader in the home console space that doesn't ensure anything in fact this is something that Jim Ryan has went on record saying himself is that it doesn't guarantee that they're going to be just as successful going into next generation with the PlayStation 5. Now, I just wanted to point these few things out because I don't think anybody looking at this situation should interpret what Sony's doing as being fearful. I've seen some people even running with the narrative that they believe this is a sign that uh, Xbox and Microsoft are going to be the market leaders next generation. I will admit that Microsoft is playing their cards much better this time around, a lot better than they did during the reveal and the announcement of the Xbox One back in 2013. And they are being much more aggressive, and they're showing a lot more confidence. And that's a great thing in general, I think, for Microsoft and Xbox. And it's obviously a great thing for fans to be witnessing. But that doesn't necessarily mean that Sony's cowering in the corner and basically allowing Microsoft to just dominate the conversation. Like I said, it is a strategy, and there's a reason. There are reasons behind what Sony is doing and why they are doing it. However... I firmly believe that Sony's in a position with PlayStation where they don't need to be doing what they're doing right now. I don't think it's necessary for Sony to have to sit around and feel that they have to wait for Microsoft to reveal the price of the Xbox Series console before they feel comfortable announcing the price of the PlayStation 5. And a big reason for this, and again, we are entering speculative territory, however, there is more and more evidence mounting up that maybe does point to the PlayStation 5 not being the more powerful console and actually the Xbox series being the more powerful console. And we know that Sony's in a position where, based off of this Bloomberg report, 
it's going to be expensive to manufacture the uh, PlayStation 5. The components alone to make up the PlayStation 5 are going to be about $450. And so the idea is Sony doesn't want to put themselves in a position. Again, this is where I think they're being smart, but I think maybe they're, you know, I, th I think they're being smart, but it may be kind of unnecessary in this situation. They don't want to find themselves in a position where Microsoft announces the series console at $500, and that is the price point that Sony was planning to release the PlayStation 5 at. However, you could end up seeing the PlayStation 5 being the less powerful console and then the series being the more powerful console. And because of that, you have two consoles that are priced the same, but there is a power difference. Now, why I say that I don't think Sony needs to worry about this is because I think they should be confident right now. They should at least have enough confidence, in my opinion, to where they don't have to fear something like that. I mean, I understand that maybe it really is a smart thing for them to decide to wait and see if, if Microsoft is going to price the Series X at $500, because if they do, then all Sony would have to do is literally the next day announce the PlayStation 5 is $449.99. But again, I feel that when you look at the bigger picture here, you look at what Sony has done this generation with PlayStation, one of the biggest things that Sony can immediately bank on, and again, I don't think this is them being arrogant if they were to do something like this, I think it's just the way it is, is the people that are already invested in the PlayStation 4's ecosystem, the PlayStation ecosystem in general, hundreds of thousands of dollars spent on digital games, a lot of people playing online games, free-to-play online games, and you know spending all this money on digital content, a lot of those people right off the bat will not care about... Um, which console is going to be more powerful because, and this is important to pay attention to because I've seen a lot of, uh, at least some people, bring the argument up. They'll try to tell you that the only thing these people care about or most gamers care about uh, is not actually exclusive games. It's the third-party games. And the third-party games, as we all know, are available on all platforms. And because of that, the only thing people are going to care about is playing the best version of those games. So if the series console does end up being more powerful than the PS5 at the same price as the PS5, then suddenly everybody's going to flock to that because everybody's going to care about playing their third-party games at the highest fidelity. But what I said before mentioning this, in my opinion, just completely counters that and overrules that, actually. People are going to care more about the hundreds of dollars or thousands of dollars, potentially, that they've invested in their PlayStation 4 games that are going to carry forward with them to the PlayStation 5. And the same goes for anybody who's currently on Xbox. That's not to say there won't be people who will switch sides based off of performance and price, because there will. But I would argue that the majority of gamers, yes, they do care about third-party games, but they care about where they've already invested in which ecosystem they've already invested in, where their friends are invested in. You see what I'm saying? So I don't buy this argument that if Sony were to come out here and just feel confident enough that even if the PS5 is slightly less powerful than the next generation Xbox, pricing it at the same price point, you know what? Maybe I'm a little bit overly confident myself in saying this, but if Sony did that, if this is the exact situation that occurs where both consoles are $500, but the series console is more powerful or has better performance, it's not going to matter. It's just not. It's going to matter for such a small percentage of people. People are still going to buy the PlayStation 5. And this is where I'm saying Sony, I think, should just be a little bit more confident and not worry about Microsoft too much. That's not to say I, they should ignore them or undermine them by any means. I'm not saying that. Don't confuse what I'm saying here. I'm not saying they should underestimate their competition or, or not be very aware of what their competition is doing. I'm just simply saying that Sony should be aware that PlayStation as a brand right now is in a very, very good spot, especially with gamers in general. That's not to say that they couldn't lose that spot, because of course they could if they made a series of mistakes. But what I'm saying is, is that if Sony's confident in the machine they're building, and they're confident in the content that they're going to have to offer alongside this machine in the coming years, then they shouldn't worry about the price point. If they feel as though it's worth $500, that's what they should sell it at. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm looking to get the best deal I possibly can. You know, if they can sell it at $450, that'd be great. 
great. You know, I can save 50 bucks if they want to try to sell it at 400. Even better, I can save potentially $100. But this is where I think that they should have some confidence and, you know, not take it to a, an extreme where suddenly they think their console's worth more than 500 I mean, of course, both of these machines, both the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series, they're both going to be very competent and capable machines, very powerful machines. And because of that, they're both probably going to be worth, realistically, more than $500, you know. And so I think this is just where... Sony is walking a fine line right now where if their silence really is because they're waiting on the competition, I don't want to see it backfire on them. You know what I mean? I don't want to see a situation where we have to wait so long for Sony to talk about the PS5. Of course, I would much rather them do it when they're ready, talk about it when they're ready. I guess I'm just trying to say that if, if these reports are true and Sony really is truly just waiting right now for Microsoft to make the moves first, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. However, I don't Again, I don't think it's actually necessary. I think PlayStation fans, based off of what I've seen, are some of the most loyal fans, and it's not because of just blind fanboyism. It's actually because PlayStation has always done some things really, really well ever since its inception, and they're continuing to do that. And, you know, Dreams, being the most recent PS4 exclusive that just launched, is a great example of that. The upcoming Last of Us Part Two, another great example of that. If Sony can continue this going into the next generation, they shouldn't worry too much if the PlayStation 5 actually is less powerful than the competition. You know, I think Sony is just so nervous about making a critical mistake that I don't want to see it get into a get to a point where they're so fearful that they're not willing to do anything, right? Or they're too silent or whatever. But who knows? I'm not a business person here. I am not the one in charge of the PlayStation division. So I certainly do not want to make it sound like I know what's best because I simply do not. There's certainly much more going on behind the scenes than what we are made aware of. I'm just talking based off of the information that we currently know. And the truth is we don't even know if this information is 100% accurate or truthful. But the one thing I do firmly believe is that knowing this, the content that Sony's going to have in the coming years, um, knowing how talented their first party studios are, and knowing that regardless of whether or not the PlayStation 5 ends up being the more powerful console, we know it's going to be an amazing console nonetheless. It may not be the best of the best. But let me tell you, content is king. And that's not to say that Microsoft won't have content. Of course, we know that they are planning to have more content than they ever have before, and that's a great thing. They're really investing heavily in first party. But Sony already has something here that's established, and it's the thing that has really, in my opinion, elevated them this generation. You know, people are going to say a game like uh, God of War selling 10 million copies or something like that isn't a success. You can't listen to these people. That is a massive success. That is absolutely huge. And anybody who wants to try to make it sound like that is not a huge reason why PlayStation has been so successful this generation. They really don't know what they're talking about. Exclusive games do matter. Um, content does matter, and the content that's going to come from Sony's first party is going to matter more than anything going forward. Because again, people who've invested in PlayStation's ecosystem, they've done so because of the games. They have felt incentivized to do so this generation due to the content, and that's going to continue. And so that's what I just wanted to say in this video. I wanted to take a little bit of time here to talk about it, and I know I'm getting a little bit ranty, so I'm going to end it here. Let me know your thoughts about this down in the comments below. I will be very interested to see what you guys have to say. Be sure to leave the video a like if you did enjoy it. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and haven't already. Hit the bell notification icon so you never miss an upload, and feel free to share this video out on top of all that. But until next time, guys, take care.